Okay, so this is um, not the video that I wanted to be making today. I know a lot of you right now are scared and despairing and confused and exhausted. That's okay, you're right to feel that way. I know pretty much all of us were shocked by the results. Um, we're obviously gonna spend the next few days and weeks and months, I'm sure, autopsying what happened and there's gonna be the usual finger pointing from people who are gonna say that they knew better, but to be honest, I think that the Harris campaign did run the best campaign they could have possibly run given the circumstances. I also think that more broadly there are a lot of massive structural disadvantages that Democrats are contending with right now that in retrospect made winning this election very difficult. First and foremost, something that I've been beating the drum about for years now, the right has a propaganda machine at its disposal that hums on for 24 hours a day on TV and radio and TikTok and Facebook and YouTube and Rumble and Discord servers everywhere that pump out right-wing propaganda on an endless loop. The top 20 podcasts in America include Joe Rogan, Tucker Carlson, Theo Vaughn, Dan Bongino, Candace Owens, Megyn Kelly, and Ben Shapiro. You know who we've got on the left on that list? The Daily and Pod Save America. All the while, Democrats continue, for some fucking reason unbeknownst to me, to pretend that mainstream media is some partner in democracy, that they're on our team. I don't know how much clearer I can say this, they are not on our team. Corporate media exists to serve its shareholders. It is a business before it's anything else, certainly before it's some protector of democracy. And yet still, our side has decided that uh, when there's a big interview, go to mainstream media. When there's news, give it to mainstream media. Let's keep validating the same outlets that continuously undermine us at every single turn. Sometimes I, I have to beg politicians for interviews uh, for my channel for months and months and months and months and still don't even hear back. And yet they'll fall over themselves to go talk to the New York Times. The same outlet that ran, what, 60 cover stories about Hillary's emails? That's who they need to confer more validation onto? That's who they need to reward with their time, with eyeballs? We desperately need a left-wing media ecosystem that rivals what they have on the right. And we desperately need our politicians and thought leaders to embrace that idea. The fact that they don't means that we will continue to lose people other than the same couple of million people who tune into mainstream media every day. People who, by the way, are already Democratic voters, already high information voters, and don't need any more persuading. That is not where the persuadable people are. Find people where they are, and until we do, we will keep losing to the right. The other barrier that we face in this election is that we are more broadly in a period of global high inflation that came about after COVID. And while some of us, you know, are privileged enough um, to be able to say that our top issues in this election are democracy and climate change, things like that, for most people in this country, people who, by the way, can't afford a $400 emergency, the cost of stuff going, stuff going up in the grocery store was their top priority. And when you're mad, you blame the people in charge. And the people in charge right now are the Democrats. For a lot of people out there, it's as simple as that. And that has happened across the world. In France, Marine Le Pen basically neutered Macron. Uh, it happened to uh, Sunak in the UK. Modi lost his majority in India, South Africa, Senegal. This was a miserable environment for incumbents, not just here in the US, but across the entire planet. And I know there's a lot of talk about, you know, was it the right move to put Kamala in? Could Joe Biden have won? Should there have been a primary instead when he dropped out? Should Biden have just announced that he wouldn't run again immediately after winning? And we can Monday morning quarterback this thing until we're blue in the face, but the reality is that I don't know if the best candidate on the face of the earth could have won in this political environment. Kamala ran a great campaign. Donald Trump ran a fucking miserable campaign. Dude literally suggested that Nancy Pelosi was a bitch, what, the day before election day? His campaign trotted out a comedian that told Puerto Ricans their island was garbage and he needed to be able to reach out to Latinos. But the reality is that Democrats are in power and they were going to be punished by people looking to punish those who are in power, just like they're doing across the entire world. That is the environment that we're in right now. So look, um, we're gonna have days and weeks and months of autopsying here to figure out what went wrong. Um, we're gonna make changes. I'll probably figure out what changes I can make um, so that I can be most useful. We need to bring younger guys into the fold. 
uh, on the left. I joined Twitch this week to do exactly that. If you're on Twitch, follow me there, please. Um, I'll try to do whatever I can to be useful um, and to try to compensate for feeling like I could have done more. Um, but look, we're going to have, uh, again, a lot of time to talk about what went wrong. But here's some practical advice for right now, for today. Take care of yourself. Make sure you have a community of people around you. Eat and drink and sleep. Um, you're no use to the movement if you are exhausted uh, and sleep deprived. And I know this is going to be a hard one, but it's the most important. Don't disengage. Take some time, take days or weeks, take the holidays, but don't check out completely. Do not reward the worst people by giving them exactly what they want. They'd want nothing more than for you to check out and give them a clear runway to just continue running roughshod over our country. The reason the ACA still exists today is because we all came together in 2018 and struck the fear of God into anybody who threatened it. If no one was paying attention, if people checked out because Donald Trump had just been elected, then 50 million Americans wouldn't have health care right now. So please do not check out. We need every person for the fight ahead. And um, I'll leave you with this, some semblance of hope, if we can scr scrounge together something. Eight years ago today, we all felt pretty similar to how we feel right now. Like I remember sitting in my living room in 2016 uh, with a whiteboard doing electoral math in my mid-20s and realizing the moment that Hillary Clinton had no more path to victory and that Donald Trump had won. Um, and I started working in political media shortly thereafter, but within two years of that moment, we would come together to elect Democrats by the biggest House margin in modern American history in the 2018 midterms. I hate that we are in this cyclical hellscape, this doom loop that we find ourselves in, but it's informative in that we know what could come next. So we stay engaged, we organize, and we vote. And I know that's cold comfort right now and might feel reductive to say that all we have to do is vote, especially in light of what we just saw. But I promise you, I promise you that in two years, it will happen. A lot of the people who voted for Donald Trump this time either don't remember what it was like when he was in office, uh, are looking back with rose-colored glasses, are buying some revisionist history, or weren't even old enough to experience it, but they'll see the chaos that comes with it. I can promise you that they will experience that chaos and come to regret it. Enough people will. And they'll do what we did in 2018. But that means that we have to stay in this fight. It means that we can't disengage. Do not give up here. Take a break. Take all the time you need, but don't give up.